You've got to tune to KEXP listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle, online around the world at kexp.org. And it's always a great day when Future Islands are live in the KEXP studios. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. It's fabulous to have you back. We're so excited about the new music and even more excited to hear you perform it live today. Thank you very much. Take it away. All right. This first song is called Back in the Tall Grass. So happy to be here. We're Future Islands coming from Baltimore, Maryland, my way in North Carolina. This next song is called A Dream of You and Me.
Sounds incredible. It's Future Islands live on KEXP. Thank you so much. Thank you. Samuel, can you introduce the band? Um, yeah, we've got uh, Mr. William Cashin over here um, on the bass guitar. Um, he also runs lights, but not today. And uh, Mr. Denny Bowen on the drums back there. And uh, this is Garrett Wilmers here on the keys and the electronic drums. And I'm, I'm Sam. It's great to have you here. Thank you always for stopping by the station when uh, you're coming through Seattle. You've got a sold-out show at the Crocodile tonight. It looks like all your shows are sold out. Yeah, yeah, they're picking up. They're picking up. I think uh, being able to sell out a big city like Seattle or uh, um, like down in Portland uh, or Chicago on the way out um, is, is really special. But we had some sellouts like coming through Montana uh, on the way out. And uh, that felt really cool too, you know, to get getting into new places and and seeing that there's uh there's fans out there. But that's why we 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 spend a lot of time out on the road trying to get to people as best we can. Well, you mentioned that you've spent a lot of time on the road, and that is so true. Your last two albums were released pretty close together, and you'd been on the road what seemed like years on end. About five years straight. And <laughs> I heard that you took a year off and just decided to deal with things in life and to work on the record did you work on singles for most of that year um yeah all of 2013 uh we, we at the end of 2012 we decided that well we could afford to take a break you know we we uh support ourselves by playing music and staying out on the road and um we could afford to, to uh, jump off the road for a little bit and kind of take some of life um so we we uh just kind of stopped booking tours and uh took a couple months off and then got back to to writing again um, in February. So we're off November 2012 and started writing February and wrote for about six months um, until we went into the studio with a big group of songs. A lot of your past records have been written kind of on the road or in very short breaks in between touring. How did it feel to approach this record in a different way? I think it was a lot more relaxed, uh, the writing process. It wasn't, um, it wasn't as... Uh, you know, was, uh, there wasn't any deadlines for anything. There wasn't like a, we have to be done by, you know, we have to be done before the tour starts next Friday. You know, we had, it was just, so it was a very kind of relaxing. We, we, we were able to kind of sink in and, and see where, where our different ideas took us with the songs. Since you mentioned that sort of freedom of time and space, you, I understand you recorded the album completely on your own, and then you got signed to 4AD, so it sounds like you had complete creative control. I don't know if that's any different than how you recorded in the past, but it seems like you had freedom of time, uh, creativity. Yeah, and that, that, was, and that was the whole idea. Um, we've, we've, always, we've, we've always done everything uh, uh, by, by the means that we have. Uh, at our disposal, uh, disposal. We we felt that our last album on the water was a little pushed, but it was also like a challenge that we took on, and uh, we were really proud with what we created. But um, through that through that process, we um, we learned <laughs> that we wanted to to have more 
even more time to ourselves and uh, not have, you know, it's, it's really about not having uh, things looming over you or people expecting something from you. We just wanted to have uh, an open creativity that didn't involve any business or uh, deadlines and uh, let things flow. Because um, we've always pushed ourselves very hard. Uh, but at some, at some point you realize that you can take a breath for a second. And that was kind of, that was kind of 2013 was, uh, end of 2012, just being like, we can, we can settle down for a second and, um, you know, try not to lose our girlfriends or whatever. Um, <laughs> where that's what I was telling the guys, like, you know, you guys should figure this out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you, you have, you have to take some time for yourself, um, or you go crazy. You've always had very dedicated fans and, I'm so happy to see that more and more people are learning about your music. Obviously, your shows are selling out, but you, the spotlight's kind of been on you recently because of the Letterman performance, which was one month ago today. It's hard to believe. I feel like that was ages ago I saw that. But a lot of people are super impressed by the way you're so honest and just putting it out there and laying it all you know, out when you sing your music. And that's how you've always been. You've been a really hardworking man for a really long time. And it's really nice to see that more and more people are discovering that now. But I want to say to those people, have you ever been to a Future Island show? I mean, they're incredible. You really have a kind of emotional connection and an honesty with your fans. Well, that's, and you know, that's the hope. And that's something that's, that we've been working towards uh, for many years. Um, and realizing that when you, when you say something, uh, that means a lot to you, it can help other people through their own problems. I think uh, I've said in interviews many times before, but when we're when we're feeling really down, we were like, you know, uh, like no one understands how I feel. When you share that thing from a point of power as a as a musician or an artist, um, and you have a platform and you share that sentiment, um, you you realize that people connect with it because because everybody goes through those things um, and they don't feel so alone. Um, and and you find that it it actually. It helps people, you know. We found uh, many people, um, almost pretty much every show, someone comes, someone comes up, if not a few people, and says how much the music has uh, helped them through a time or been there for them in a time where they were, uh, where it was hard for them, and and that's why we keep doing it, you know, and that's why we continue to to share that honesty um, in the hopes that it that can help people. Well, it is a very powerful album and a very bold title, Singles, but really every song does stand on its own. There's a lot of diversity in this record as well. Is that a reflection of the time and space that you had this time? Yeah, I think so. No, yeah, I think I think definitely just, uh, just um, I think Sam said in an interview that it's sort of like a greatest hits of what we can do as a band. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm into that. She definitely shows our versatility. Um, we, I mean, ever since we were 18 year old kids, like playing house parties in Greenville, North Carolina, um, we were writing slow, like torch, you know, torch ballads and, uh, and dance music. And that's what we've continued to do for a long time. Never really changed that. Just trying to, uh, trying to figure out how to do it again and again and, um, and connect with something real. So, so yeah, but, uh, a lot of it was, you know, usually we go into the, the studio with five or six songs and then write the rest of the album while we're in the studio. And this time we went in the studio with 25 songs to pick the best material. And, uh, and so it was like the best, the best cream of the crop from, uh, from, you know, a good six, seven months of writing. Um, and then a couple of tracks from, from way back that made those demos. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think we, we just felt really strong, strong. We, we knew that it was an arrogant title, but I also think it's a confident title and vague enough. I was trying to talk the guys into just calling it songles for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, you delivered. For it. <laughs> you delivered on it, and uh, it's a great album. It's called Singles. Future Islands live here in the KEXP studios. You want to play more music? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this next song is a song for our grandfathers. It's a little slice of North Carolina for y'all out here. Get away from what relates and what was done. 
Cause it's all over now Through the woods I come run to loose feet And got my name is not a trace I hear the ghost whisper and those old eyes are watching me but I feel safe grandfather looking over me he said don't make him wait gotta go long got one more for y'all out there um this last song is called spirit i'm gonna get a little dancey up in here so if you're out there driving around or sitting at home please uh get up and do something <laughs>
live on KEXP. It sounds fantastic. You guys must be so excited to be out on the road. So good to be out on the road. These songs sound great. The new album, Songles, I mean singles. <laughs> <laughs> Feature Islands. Uh, it's great to have you back here in the studio. Thanks so much for making the time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. And congratulations on all the success. You're the hardest working band I know. You deserve it. Thank this you. is KEXP Seattle.